Hey, it is Craig the Pool Man with Pool Specialists coming to you with a video on the new Jandy e pump. I call it the Stealth Variable Speed because it uses a stealth body. And uh, this gets connected up to automation in a different way if you have one of the newer automation systems such as Rev02 or later. Um, you're no longer going to use the dip switches. So I really love the Jandy pumps. They really have a, a great design. They're very robust and extremely high quality because they actually build their own motors. They don't actually purchase them. And the system is set up so that you take these two screws out. And of course they don't fall out, which is a great idea. And here is how you connect everything. It is so nice that you've got so much room to connect up your high voltage. And so here we have our ground and we have our two lines, line one, line two. And this particular pump must have 240 volts. It takes 20 amps. This is effectively a three horsepower pump for all intents and purposes. And so power, power, ground. And now you have two sets of relays. And people ask, well, what is the purpose of those relays? Well, the purpose of those relays is this relay over here, relay number one, that engages when you get up to 1,725 RPMs. So this would actually turn on the circuit to your salt system because that needs to have about 25 gallons a minute to work correctly and Technically, there are codes that require it to be turned off when you don't have enough flow and especially if there's no power to the pump. So you can use this to actually turn on your salt system. Now relay number two engages at 2250 RPMs and typically that would be used to turn on your heater because if your flow is too low through the heater, you could actually damage it and it'll cause things to trip out and cause problems. So that is the purpose of those two relays. They are coming out with a version that does not have those relays and that'll be a little bit less expensive than this version. Then you come over here and you'll notice that this is a separate compartment. From here, this is my high voltage compartment. And over here, I have my RS-485 connector, and I also have some dip switches. So if you had what I'll call the legacy or an older system, you can use these dip switches to assign the variable speed pump. So with switch number three and four in the down position, this would be technically address one. And then if you flip up switch number three, it would be address number two. If three was down and four was up, address number three. And then if they're both up, address number four. And that is all that they allow you on the legacy system. So, but we're not gonna use that. And if you have a newer system, you cannot, cannot set up using the legacy switches because it will cause a conflict It'll eventually find this pump, it'll want to assign it, and then you'll have some issues with it turning on and off in what I call ghost mode. So you don't want to do that. So here's my RS-485 connector. Red, black, yellow, green is the connection. And they actually have this really nice way to secure that line in. You can see that, that it channels it through and it locks it into place. That way, if somebody trips on it or pulls on it, it doesn't cause any issues inside here. So that's the pump itself. Um, of course, make sure that it's bonded correctly. Make sure that you're through a GFI circuit breaker. And particularly, this pump requires a 20 amp, 240 volt, and it would have to be a Siemens circuit breaker. Siemens is the only one that actually manufactures a circuit break that, breaker that's designed 
for pool systems and you'll notice that it's a lot bigger than a regular circuit breaker and it has special circuitry in it to deal with what I'll call stray voltages that come in through your bonding or your grounding, which is very, very common in pool applications. And if you had an inexpensive or cheap house type breaker, such as an Eaton GFI, it would typically falsely trip. And they tend to falsely trip a lot more in the wintertime than they do in the summertime mainly because it's starting up uh, startup capacitors and things of that nature. And so by falsely tripping in the wintertime, everything freezes up because the pump doesn't turn on. So we're gonna go ahead and put this back on. And now we're going to show you how to configure this on your app on your phone. The easiest way to know that you have a rev of the software new enough to handle the serialized pumps is there will be a cog or a gear in your upper right hand corner of your app. And if you click on that gear, it will bring up the next screen. The next screen, you're going to select system setup and now we're going to set up the VS pump. So we're gonna click on that. And then you will see that if you have legacy pumps at this point that do not have serialized addresses, you can now set them up in app mode. You don't have to go into web mode and you would assign your pumps here the same way that you would in web mode. So your pumps would have a dip switch setting of address one, two, three, four. Now, if you come down here to the serialized address pumps, you'll notice we have a lot more options. So we can actually have pumps five through 20 assigned individually as variable speed pumps. So you'll notice that none of these have the application installed. So we're gonna click the right arrow key on pump five and it says not installed we're going to go ahead and we're going to make this the filter pump and we're going to go ahead and click the right arrow key on pump name and we're backspace and we're just going to call this filter pump okay and now you'll see that that will get updated the model of pump is a Jandy VSP. There actually are no other options other than this. So I can't imagine that that's going to ever change, but uh, it's nice to see that they've got something in there to address it. And then the pump address, which is not assigned. So we're going to hit the right key on that and you'll see where it says not assigned and right above it, it tells you what the serial number is. So, we're going to assign that serial number as this pump. We're going to save it and presto bingo. Now we have our filter pump set up. So what do we want to do about our feature speeds? So the pool, right, is going to run 24 seven. And typically this is going to be set up for your actual filter pump. And that would actually not have an auxiliary. And then your spa mode also is set up automatically. And those are typically about the right speeds that you're gonna wanna run your filter pump on all 24 hours uh, as a low speed. That way your salt system is always engaged, your water's always moving. It's a very energy efficient speed for this pump. So you're minimizing the amount of electricity that you're using. In spa mode, you've got it set up to go to um, 2750. We can actually then come in and we can create a name for our next one, which we're gonna call high speed. And we're going to set that for 2750. Um, we haven't 
named our auxiliaries yet, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to assign that to auxiliary one. And later we'll call that high speed, we'll sign it, and that'll be high speed. Okay, next we want to come over and you'll notice that we have spillover is already filled in. And there too, we want to have it at a pretty fast speed because we want to make sure that the water is vaulting over the spillway, not running down the side of it. And you may want to crank this up. Um, you could go all the way to the top. It's technically 3450, but it comes up as 3445. And you save that. And you can come up, you can now define your pool heat, your spa heat, um, solar heat, all of these things that are all set up. Um, their default numbers are relatively accurate. Um, you don't want to run the water through the heater too fast or too slow, especially in the wintertime. If you run it too fast, you'll actually uh, cause condensation, which will prematurely soot the heater up. So 2250 translates to about 50 to 60 gallons a minute, which would be ideal in the wintertime. So that is how we set our speeds. We hit the back button, we go back, and we can set our master speeds here. So what's our minimum, our maximum, uh, our priming speed, how long, and then the most important is our freeze protection. Again, in my opinion, the default speeds are pretty good. I would encourage you, especially with freeze protect, not to go much below 2500 RPMs. It's still very energy efficient, but you're going to get enough flow and, and not have any freezing issues. I am a little bit in disagreement with the minimum speed. I tend to like to have that up around 1500. So go ahead and get that right to 1500. And we're going to save that. Um, I, I just think it's not good for the pump to run too slow. And then you're not moving any water. So that is your master speed setup. We're going to go back, go back again, go back again, close this. And now we can actually go in and define everything. You'll notice that on this rev of the software, we can also go in and assign schedules. So we can add a schedule. Simply we'll add the filter pump and then when do we want it on? Um, I prefer to turn it on at about 6 a.m. So save that and then off. I run them for 24 hours so therefore I'm going to turn it off at 5.59 a.m. And I'm going to run it every single day. That's just my preferences. I think it keeps the pool nice and clean and keeps the water flowing. So we're going to save that. And we've added data in as a schedule. Typically you're going to add in high speed during um, the morning so we had set that to auxiliary one and I'm gonna say well let's start that at 7 a.m. and we're gonna go until 11 a.m. so we got a couple hours there and every day save that and then as a final example we'll go ahead and add in the spillover and I'm going to start that at 5 p.m.
and I'm going to end it at 10 p.m. And again, every day. So the whole point of running at a higher speed is it allows the pump to run at a high enough speed where the skimmers are all functioning and sucking all the dirt and debris off of the top of the water because if you don't suck it off the top of the water, guess what? It falls to the bottom of the pool and then it's more of a nuisance to get out and it takes a lot more time. So you want to try and run your pump to be as efficient as possible and save you as much work as possible. So we, we're saving that. So at this point, we can see that everything is actually scheduled. We have our pump running 24 hours, then we're going to high speed, then we're going to spillover. So hope that gives you an idea of how to add the schedules. I do really like this new feature that they've done. I will tell you that Jandy is moving away from using the web format as it does sometimes have connection issues or taking longer to connect that way. So in the future you're going to see more and more things added to being able to configure in the app. In the future, their next generation will not even have a web mode. It will be all application based, such as on your phone or tablet. Hope that's helpful. And if you have any questions, please put a comment in below.